All right, guys, today we're talking about the Cincinnati MAM. That stands for Medium Area Additive Manufacturing. And, well, by the machine behind me, yes, that's what they consider medium. This is a full one meter by one meter by one meter build volume. This machine is absolutely gigantic. Not only that, you can do pellet filament extrusion, or sorry, pellet filament extrusion. Yes, that's right. It's a hybrid system. So you can have pellet on both nozzles, or you can have pellets and filament, or filament and filament, whatever you want. And that really opens up the options for your materials and composites to be able to print everything from molds to stuff for foundries and aerospace parts on this machine. Did I mention aerospace parts? Yes, I did, because this does print the high temperature polymers like Peak and Ultim. It's capable of all of that with a heated chamber. I believe leave up to 90 Celsius still, right? Still 90 Celsius. So you can do some really big parts out of aerospace engineering grade materials on filament or get the pellets and save a ton of money. It's very, very cool. So one cool thing about this machine is it's literally so big that it gets its own tool chest. Uh, right over here, as you can see, it's got this swinging arm with the computer system on it. And then you've got drawers for the different nozzles, which uh, if you come in here and look at this, these are the nozzles that are actually being used by this machine. So you replace the nozzles, you've got hardened steel, regular steel, brass, and other materials available in a variety of sizes, up to 2.4 millimeters. So it's all the way down to 0.6. All right, so you've got a full range of nozzles in brass, hardened steel, regular steel, etc., with a full range of sizes from 0.6 all the way to 2.4 millimeters. The pellets will actually go up to five millimeters. So if you're doing really big parts, similar to the BAM, I mean, you're getting close there. And we'll talk about the BAM later. Um, obviously, oh, you can see that our nanopolymer adhesive has being used wonderfully because it's great for large parts. You got just other areas for goodies and swag and whatever you want. You keep your liquor down here if, you're, if you drink. Uh, <laughs> anyway, I digress. Um, over here, as you can see by the danger symbol, uh, this is the electrical cabinet and everything in there is extremely well wired. So in here you can see they've got the air filtration. We'll go around to the other side in a minute and check out the filament humidity controlled chamber. And of course, as Cincinnati is well known for over 100 years, they do a great job on the actual hardware within the machine and the electricals here. So it's very maintainable and very well put together, made right here in the USA. So moving over here, you notice there's a computer attached to the printer. Uh, yeah, that's right. So this is actually a full Windows 10 system. So they've got the entire user interface here where you can see the temperatures and the speeds and the actual G-code feed as it's moving. You can manually move the machine around with everything else here, really, really cool. They've got a built-in camera so you can actually monitor this remotely from wherever you are. And uh, it uses Simplify 3D to slice. So if you've already used some 3D printers, you're gonna be diving right into this thing, you know what to do. If you hire somebody to operate this machine, there's a good chance they know how to use S3D. So that's a really great feature. It's industry standard stuff that just makes this thing easy to use, even though it's a gigantic beast of an industrial machine. Now, about the size. One of our previous customers actually had to cut a hole in the wall to get this thing into their facility. The good news is this has been redesigned slightly so this, this will actually fit in a door. You just gotta take this metal box off the top and you're good to go. So no more cutting holes in the walls, hopefully, unless you're, now you probably don't want this in your apartment. Anyway, over here we've got new sliding doors and inside we were printing a gigantic ukulele uh, out of what, CF, nylon, CF, ABS? Kevlar, ABS. Kevlar ABS, ABS Kevlar. So again, open material system. You can use whatever you want to and they've got profiles set up for a lot of the major ones already. Inside, we've got servos and, and like CNC parts. And, I mean, this thing weighs almost 3,000 pounds. So it's built like an absolutely industrial CNC machine. And <laughs> the Z doesn't actually move. It's the gantry that moves up and down. So you've got this extremely robust gantry holding the giant heads in there. And in there you've got, again, the combination of either dual pellet extruders, a pellet and a filament extruder, or two filament extruders, your choice. Uh, now, moving around, you've got a giant bed. Again, a meter by a meter by a meter. There's not many printers on the market that come close to that. And there's a lot of different ways to arrange it, so definitely hit us up and let us know what you're thinking and we'll help you get the right setup. Okay, so 
uh, when leveling the bed, it's a stationary print bed, so you don't actually have to level it after you've done it once. It pretty much stays good. On top of that, they're using a Skawa motion drivers, and inside, of course, you've got the 90 Celsius chamber, the 500 Celsius on the nozzle, and 150 Celsius on the bed. All right, well, what else we got? I mean, anything on this hot list? Check this out. That's uh, some of the, the main things to check out, but we're gonna move right around to the filament cabinet over here and check out how that works. So if I just open up this thing here, you'll notice 10 kilogram spool and obviously there's still more room available. So you can fit a ton of material in here and it'll get your biggest projects done without issue. It's also humidity and temperature controlled. So if your filament you know, absorbs moisture like most of them do, that problem is taken care of and it's gonna be good to go. Very cool stuff. Oh man, they've done a great freaking job. You can see the tube coming up there for the pellets. Awesome, just awesome. Close that again, and then I'm not gonna open this one up because it'll kill me. Uh, no, no, I just can't open it right now. <laughs> uh, but down here, you've got the water cooling system. So everything here, totally serviceable, very high quality components and everything, and they are cooling the hot ends and the other critical components within the machine. So, what can you really print on this machine? I mean, we've got some examples, let's check them out. Um, if you look closely here, this is really gonna be the difference in nozzle size and layer height. So if we go down the list, this is with a 0.6 nozzle, looks like your standard uh, part that you're gonna get off an FDM machine, no matter what you have, with a 0.6 nozzle. So that's pretty legit, and then you move up to the 0.8 millimeter nozzle, it, you know, not too much has changed yet. It's still looking, you know, relatively normal. Then you start to see a lot thicker layer lines there, thick uh, base layer, layer widths, actually. Um, still printing it pretty fine layer height at the one millimeter nozzle. And then moving down to the 1.2 and the 1.8, getting bigger and bigger. Now we're getting into the 2.4 and that's the zone where we're doing very large scale objects very quickly all the way down to, what is this, a four? This is a three millimeter and a five millimeter. So by, by the time we get down here, you can see, obviously the layer lines have gotten bigger, but that also means you're printing a lot faster. So printing on any normal machine with a normal size nozzle is gonna take 800 hours to do something, you know, this tall. Whereas this, you just swap out the five millimeter nozzle on the pellet system and you're good to go. Down here, I believe these were actually printed on the BAM, and that's another machine you should definitely check out that we'll have more content on soon, uh, but check out visionminer.com for a little more info on that. Anyway, so examples, very good. Now, actual practical applications. Uh, what is this here? This is a carbon fiber layup mold. So, you got the front of a Jeep, right? Uh, uh, yeah, okay, so this was printed uh, on the MAM. How long did this take to print, you know? This took about six hours to print. I mean, this is, this is probably 15 pounds at least, right? 20 pounds maybe? Uh, and it's a layup mold for carbon fiber composite parts. So you can see here, we got the carbon fiber part, came off it, super lightweight, perfectly matching the mold. And it just, you know, if you're doing a lot of big parts in carbon fiber, then this can reduce your tooling and mold costs significantly. Not only the cost of the material and everything, but the time and the manufacturing time, the machine hours, everything, you're really gonna see a big improvement. Over here, we've got, uh, was this the MAM? Yeah. Dude, this was printed on the MAM. This is probably the five millimeter nozzle. We've got the huge layer lines there. I don't know if you can hear that. Uh, big layers, but man, you could literally have an interior design company that makes stuff for people's homes or whatever just with this machine. I mean, I want one of these in my house. I don't know about you guys. Uh, let me know in the comments below what you would print if you had one of these large format printers. Um, obviously over here, we've got some more stuff. Was this the BAM or is this the MAM? This was the BAM. Okay, once again, the BAM. This is some sort of CFABS. CFABS, uh, you can make stools. And we can turn it this way. Now we've got a little, you know, a footrest and a little coffee table, whatever, you know. It's freaking awesome. Or I turn it on its side and you got some modern art hanging on your wall. You never know. Uh, <laughs> dude, too much. Okay, now this is something really cool. We're gonna come over here and obviously we've got the obligatory Benchy. Very proud. We've got some big ones like this, but not quite this perfect at the shop from back in the day. Beautiful. We've got, is this Ultim? 
This is some Ultim 9085. Once again, it's high temperature capable. So if you need uh, something for welding fixtures or aerospace ducting or stuff that needs to be self-extinguishing and high temperature resistance and chemically resistant, it's capable of all these materials. Now down here, this is one of those applications we see a lot. How heavy is this? Can I pick this up? No, I don't want to pick that up. <laughs> so this is really where a lot of things come in. If you're making a really detailed, complex, smooth mold for something, you can still print really quickly using the huge nozzle. But then what you do is you take that part that it printed with these rough edges and you stick it into your CNC and you smooth everything out. So you create a net shaped part and then turn that into the final precise exact mold or part that you want. That's another really good, efficient way to do it. Uh, these are some, some other cool stuff they're working on uh, with the BAM, the big area additive manufacturing thing that's basically the size of a building. Um, but they've got ABS foams that can allow you to print more lightweight interior fills and sport structures and things of that nature uh, along with the regular material. They've got multi-material on the BAM now, which is a really, really big deal. This is another example of the ABS foam and multi-material. So it's PLA and PLA foam all in one part. This is freaking sweet. I've never really seen anything like that. Layer lines on the BAM, and that's just a teaser for when we do another feature on the BAM. So, uh, we've got Kyle Davidson right up here in the house. Uh, dude. Oh, man, Rob. All right, tell me what's up. What do you got here? I uh, wanted to show you this is actually TPU, ABS, and a foaming agent. So, a um, little bit of flexibility, a little bit of stiffness, and at the same time, um, really a lightweight part. What do you think of that? probably something you'll never ever see again. It's much lighter than I expected. Um, it's definitely flexible. And it, yeah, it, it's a, it feels like it's got that internal structure that's not really there, like a foam. Yeah, exactly. Thing. You, you could feel the foam and at the same time, you know, it still has a stiffness to it and a rigidity that you're just not gonna see anywhere else. And that's just our ability to blend materials in process while we're printing. Oh God, I'm like, yeah, no, that's good. <laughs> really good. And uh, in, in, a, in a camera flex, of course. Yes. <laughs> awesome. Uh, anything else here you'd like to, to go a little more in depth on? So this is actually a, a graded transition. So we printed this. We printed this in one process out of the same extruder. So we have neat PLA and then we have PLA with a foaming agent. So what we're actually able to do is add multiple material properties and reinforce, reinforce certain sections of a print. So what we feel like we're going to be able to do is save a lot of money, save a lot of time using foam, and at the same time address those areas that really need a little more reinforcement and do it all within one pellet extruder. And that's what our multi-material system can bring. Dude, awesome. Much more coming in that multi-material system. So if you're not already subscribed, definitely hit that button down there so when it comes out, you don't miss it. We love the guys over at Cincinnati. 100% made in USA and great service and support. They've been around over 100 years. They know what they're doing and clearly they've got the machinery to prove it. So if you've got any questions, check out visionminer.com. Shoot us an email or a call. We're here to help you find the right solution for your business. And uh, with that, I think that's all we got. That's all Kyle, we got. thank you so much for uh, facilitating this. Always and, a pleasure, Rob. Man, have a positive rest of your day. We'll see you on the next video.